The fox population in a certain region has an annual growth rate of 5% per year. In the year 2012, there were 23,800 foxes counted in the area. What is the fox population predicted to be in the year 2020, round to the nearest fox? Well, there's actually a couple of ways of solving this. Uh, one way is going to be easier, um, but it only works under certain conditions. And those conditions have actually been met here. And the conditions are, you know the growth rate as a percentage per unit time. So what we can do uh, in that situation is we can say the amount of foxes after uh, each, uh, the number of years has passed that we're interested in is going to be the initial amount. So at in 2012, there were 23,800 foxes. And then we need to determine how that gets changed over time. Well, the way that, that gets changed over time is it increases by 5% per year. So we take 1, and it's plus the percentage if it's an uh, increase, or it's minus the percentage if it's a decrease. So 1 plus 5% uh, would be 1.05. And then we raise that to the number of time periods. And so this only works again if this is written in terms of, uh, given in terms of a percentage per uh, time slice. Okay, so if, if it was 5% per day, well then we need to have our time measurement in days. So it has to match there. Okay, so. Uh, this is the amount, 23,800 in 2012. So if we want to know what the population is going to be in 2020, that's going to be eight years beyond. So the time would be eight, and we would do 23,800 times 1.05 to the eight. So what that gives us is this. So 23,800 times 1.05 raised to the 8, which is 35,163. Okay, so that's clearly the easier of the two methods. But if you weren't certain that you could use this one and you wanted to know the more general method, let me show you the alternate way as well. So the alternate method uses the general growth and decay model, which is y equals y naught e to the kt. So y naught is the initial population. We do know that. So we could say this is uh, 23,800. All right, then we have e to the k. We don't know. But one thing that we do know is that after one year passes, we're going to reduce that population size by, or sorry, we're going to grow that population size by 5%. So what would 5% more foxes look like? It would be 23,800 times 1.05. So that's an increase. So if you multiply by one, that the number of foxes stays steady. If you multiply it by 1.05, it increases by 5%. So that would be 24,990. Okay, so I'm going to set this equal to 24,990 instead. And what we need to do is solve for k. That's our growth constant. So if we divide both sides by 23,800, And this actually should just, let me see what happens here. I think it, I know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, it was just, it's going to come down to 1.05 because, I mean, that's exactly how we came up with these two numbers. It represents just an increase of 5%. So 1.05 equals e to the k.
this statement basically says if you start with one fox, then in the next year you're going to have 5% more, so 1.05 fox. I know that doesn't make sense with the discrete uh, values, but you know, that's the concept. All right, so we need to get k by itself. We're not going to be able to do that unless we change this into a logarithmic equation. So it would be a log base e of the 1.05 equals k. And of course, log base e is just the natural logarithm. So we would do the natural log of 1.05, and that gives us 0 0.0488. Okay, so what we have now is the growth model y equals 23,800 e to the negative, whoops, not a negative, sorry, e to 0 0.0488 times t. Okay, now if we want to know what the population is in the year 2020, so we're going to go from 2012, which is uh, the starting point, and eight years later, we're at 2020. So now we need to plug in eight into this formula. So the number of foxes after eight years would be 23,800 e to the 0 0.0488 times eight. And using the calculator, probably looks like this would never come up with the same answer as what we had on the other half of this problem. But just watch and see. So 0 0.0488 times 8, and we get 35,166. And we didn't get exactly what we had originally, 35,163, but the thing is, we rounded this value of k off to four decimal places. So if you'll notice, this is accurate to four significant figures. Uh, if we had used more decimal places for k, I think we would have gotten it to be exactly 35,163, just like uh, in the previous example.